Hello, I'm Jim Timulty, State Senator from Walpole, and welcome to Beacon Hill Update, a periodic program where I discuss uh, important issues of the day. Today I'm joined by my very special friend, uh, Representative Paul McMurtry uh, from Dedham. Welcome, Paul. Senator, good to be here. Good to see you. Uh, we're going to discuss some of uh, the background, some of the things that are important to Representative McMurtry. We share uh, Precinct 8 in Walpole, but we represent uh, many of the same uh, neighborhoods in, uh, or the interests of, of neighbors in Norfolk County. So, Paul, you have a rather interesting um, start to your political career. I think you started as a uh, dark horse candidate an independent uh, running for a uh, open, a special uh, election, That's open right. seat after Bo uh, our mutual friend, Representative Bob Coughlin, sure. was promoted into uh, into the agency as a super secretary That's for right. then Governor Deval Patrick. That's right. So if you could t tell, the, tell the viewers a little bit about sure. that. Sure. Uh, first of all, I appreciate the opportunity to join you on uh, your show and, uh, and also just want to thank you for uh, your leadership to the town of Walpole and your district, and I've admired your work from the very first day coming into the legislature. And it's really a pleasure to work with you and our colleagues in uh, the House uh, on behalf of everyone in Walpole. So, uh, for me, I was elected in 2007, as you mentioned, uh, Representative Coughlin, my predecessor. Uh, was tapped to move into the administration under Governor Patrick and Lieutenant Governor Murray, uh, which opened up an opportunity for a special election. And yes, I was unenrolled at the time, and um, because of the deadlines of the special election, I couldn't enroll in any party, but I had pledged to enroll in the Democratic Party. Um, and I don't have any regrets doing that. I'm proud to participate and be a member of the Democratic team. I get to be an active part in the legislative process as a Democrat rather than a, uh, a, an observer as a Republican. But I will say, as you are well aware, that um, it is bipartisan um, and bicameral with both the House and Senate and both Republicans and Democrats. It's not a, uh, a partisan uh, we, we, it's not a partisan uh, effect here on yeah. Beacon Hill, and we have constant uh, cooperation, collaboration, and consensus. And a majority of the legislation, significant legislation that's been generally reform, um, has all been uh, bipartisanly supported. So it's uh, been a pleasure. And um, you know, from 2007 and the special election, fast forward nine years later, it's just been uh, an extreme pleasure to represent the citizens of Walpole in my district and the towns of Denham and Westwood. Well, that's what I thought so fascinating. Because you were an independent, because you were a, uh, a businessman too, I thought that gave you the right background. But when we were originally watching that seat, I think many of us just anticipated that Dedham and West would, that a Democrat would prevail in that seat over a Republican. And then when the, as I had said, the dark horse came in. But I kind of like that, you know, here's a businessman. He's going to have an approach that works for the engine that is, uh, that powers my district, which is small business. Yeah. We have very, very few uh, large companies, maybe Siemens, maybe a Sturdy Memorial Hospital, maybe Norwood uh, that would employ a lot. But for the most part, uh, the engine that is the Massachusetts economy, and particularly our district, which funds uh, the necessary spending that we have to do, comes from small business. Sure. So you're balancing, and you're still balancing uh, those books at the community theater and at the museum, right. and uh, have to deal with that. And also, I think w what you had told me was what motivated me was I was, you know, part of that downtown business association. We, you know, we needed to do some work through the town and through the state to revitalize that area. Some restaurants have come in and uh, you've know, really done some wondrous things on the private sector side and the public, si public sector side. And is it difficult to balance, uh, balance the, the, the roles and the, and the opportunities you have, but the responsibilities of, of employing some people? That's, you know, I have a great team here at the State House and a dedicated staff at the theater, so I'm fortunate in that regard. Additionally, I enjoy what I do. I'm passionate about the work, I'm passionate about the movie theater, I'm passionate about the constituent services uh, here at uh, on, on Beacon Hill, um, taking care of the patrons at the theater. Um, so and it, it, is, it is an interesting dynamic. I did uh, get into the legislature by being asked by the customers and the patrons. Um, and fascinating to me, when I was campaigning in 2007, um, folks, as I was knocking on doors throughout the district, would say, we'll vote for you as long as you keep that theater open. So a unique business in downtown Dedham um, that has given me, afforded me some opportunities to give back in public service. Uh, I've been self-employed, as you mentioned, for um, going on uh, too many decades. Um, and 
people have been good to me, and uh, my public service is a way to say thank you, to give back, and to try to make a difference in some people's lives. Not unlike what you do and our colleagues, again, in the House. I mean, it is a extreme honor and pleasure to serve under your leadership in Walpole and work alongside of uh, Chair Kafka, Representative Rogers, and Representative Dooley, where we um, work in collaboration for the best interests of uh, Walpole and in our respective districts. So, um, and public service is a calling for uh, people at different times in their lives. And for me, it, it aligned itself uh, at a good time, and I'm, I'm glad to be here. But the data certainly has given me um, the opportunity to um, balance the duties of the Office of State Representative as long as managing, uh, along with managing the, uh, the Dedham Community Theater. Well, that day-to-day -day experience, particularly when something comes up like the minimum wage, where I think we're all in agreement in some form as the 200, and I, I always say the 200 because I try to explain to people, people think of the legislature as a democratic monolith, that you all are in lockstep and you move, and what they don't realize is when you see, uh, last session there were 36 members of the Senate who were in the Democratic Party, four members uh, who were Republican. And they think that we move in lockstep, and they don't realize that in that big party, there were a tremendous amount of differences and a tremendous amount of perspectives. I try to explain, I know they're not happy with Washington because Washington is so, so driven by the party line that they're disappointed. I think if they got a good view as to what we do up here, and then you look at our delegation, which is very successful, there are a lot of different interests and perspectives. You have a lawyer, you have a person who was a town clerk. Myself, I, I worked in state government, but then I spent a nice five years in, uh, in the private sector working for a telecommunications company as a purchasing manager, so I got a nice eye at where the bottom line is, and you know, we had to, uh, we as a company had to make money to keep the doors, yeah. uh, doors open. So when you look at that town meeting that we have, that is the legislature, like representative town meeting, each one of us has a perspective, each one has, a, has, uh, has, has an experience and some ideas, and you know, we have a philosophy that we want to adhere to, but at, uh, what I remind people too is, if I can't get to 21, or if somebody in the house can't get to 81, they're not going to be very successful uh, sure. at this business. And I think when you break it down for people like that, they get to realize that, you know, I watch Open Town Meeting, I see people from Main Street, I see people on the Rec Commission, I see people uh, from the school department, and I realize very quickly I was collaborating in the Senate the most with suburban legislators because there are different challenges to an urban legislator and there are different priorities that they may have, and we try to balance them as, as you know, you're, you're on a border community with Boston, and Boston for years and years and years had so many uh, of their delegation, and they kind of dominated, the cities dominated, and I think we're, we're trying, and very successful as a delegation, as I mentioned, that we're trying to move resources to help our communities, and I think the excellent cooperation on, in particular for Walpole, prison mitigation, uh, that was the brainchild of Representative Rogers sure. some 15 years ago. <clears throat> and what that as a host community has brought to Walpole has led us to, to do some great programming uh, in response to what we've done for the prison, even though it's been vetoed in many years. Sure. We were able to, <clears throat> through co cooperation with our colleagues, override that with a two-thirds vote of both branches. But uh, the town of Walpole is going to be able to, is in a, is in a good financial uh, position where we're going to have a fire station and a police station uh, they're gonna, that will come online, and it won't be with, uh, with an override. Right. So I, I want to thank you uh, and the rest of the delegation for seeing what we were doing regionally and making an effort up here in Beacon Hill that's been successful over the last five, 15 years, and it's, it's going to make a huge difference. No, that, absolutely, and I couldn't agree with you more. The fact that uh, you serve the town of Walpole as their senator and a resident of Walpole and then have four uh, representatives to partner with you um, I think brings an immense added value to the citizens of Walpole. Um, as you know, the many meetings that we sit in on the behalf of uh, the town um, here at the State House, um, there's five voices uh, versus some of our colleagues who have just the two, a House, and a, yeah. and a House member and a Senate member. So I have no doubt that um, the delegation that we have working together on behalf of the best interests of everyone in Walpole is effective, and certainly for me, through the years, it's been, um, as, as I said, just a, a source of admiration to be able to um, listen and learn and uh, um, 
see the principles and perspectives from our colleagues and you and then uh, apply them and reach the consensus that we know is going to be helpful and not harmful. Um, and I also couldn't agree with you more on the aspect about the work that we do in public office, the, the fact that um, sometimes it, it, it doesn't get beyond Beacon Hill and echo into our district. So that's why it's so important that shows like this uh, broadcast. Um, and you're really going beyond, above and beyond in your public service. Um, I encourage, as you know, um, and extremely grateful, by the way, for um, your support of the intern legislation. Yeah. Um, really, without your leadership on that, we would be denying opportunities for high school students and college students who are political science majors or not, just people who may have an interest in holding public office or being a part of the uh, vast uh, opportunities in the state agencies to give back and to make a difference and to dedicate their lives to um, the public good. So um, we have so many opportunities here, so many initiatives uh, that you've led, um, and I think uh, even having a moment like this to share with the residents of Walpole um, some insight is extremely helpful to the work that we do. Yeah, it's uh, it, the the intern. This is an open body. I think people are very surprised when they come in here and they they get a tour and they get to walk around and see what ha see what's happening and see how close yeah. they can get uh, to government. And then when you tell them this is a building that you know John Adams, this was John Hancock's uh, uh, pasture for his cows. Yeah. He donated the land when yeah. he was the first elected governor and that's who that's who put up this building. The people who signed that declaration of independence, uh, you know, where it really started here in the early 1760s that, you know, this the greatest nation on earth started that's right. right here. We were the we were the force behind it. John Adams on his horse down from Braintree all the way down at formerly a surveyor of roads in right. Braintree, then to be our second uh, president of the United States, but yeah. these people work here. We get to work here, yeah. and you get to see it. And then when the interns, if, if w they're able to afford to come in, uh, they do a tremendous amount of work. Sure. You represent 40,000 people. Yeah. I represent 160,000 people. It's very difficult to do all that you can for them if you don't have the bodies to help. Right. And I think there are many people who started in this, uh, in this legislature as either a page or an intern who worked their way up. But uh, we always harp on how effective our delegation is. I don't think in the lean years, if we didn't have the team and the teamwork that we had, that Walpole would have seen uh, some of the resources that they have Absolutely. over the years. Yeah. And it's, it's important. I always say we work as a team, but yeah. there are some times when you have to react for your district as an individual. And I always remember, because I think it was, uh, it's one of my favorite moments in the building where uh, in uh, 2008 or 2009, you were, you know, you were a rookie, you were in your first, uh, first term, and we would, in budget, which budget is very late, you know, it's, uh, it's a May night, or no, I think it might have been July 31st. Mm -hmm. Might have been July 31st, but it was in the summer. We were finishing up, uh, up some things, and I had done all that I had needed in that day. We got our bills done, and there was nothing lingering for me into the midnight hour. Uh, as it has in the past, which is very frantic. So I went upstairs and I was like, I better check and see what's happening over in the house to see if there's anything that I you know, may need to do or if something's coming over. And I remember seeing you up on the rostrum uh, late at night. I was a like, rookie up on the rostrum in the 160 member house. I mean, he's moving uh, very quickly. There's something important to him. And then I had realized that you had, uh, you had to take a principled stand and, uh, and use the power of the body by knowing the rules to uh, to slow things down and put a stop to them until you uh, you weren't going to equivocate. You right. wanted to be heard, right. uh, and you did that. I thought the I thought the world of you because yeah. that's I, I I know the rookie year and and I came in with a lot of friends. I wasn't new to the politics by any means because I had run some years uh, in the past. But you stood up, and uh, now when I ever drive by University Station, I can see why you took that very risky move to stand up. But I think it showed. Uh, people in your body that you knew what you were doing. You weren't going to roll over, and you were going to you were going to you're going to speak your mind, and you were going to represent your forty thousand with uh, with passion. And I think that's reflected in in the speaker now, saying that you know you're the right man for the role that is uh, pretty powerful and significant as the as the house chair of uh, of personnel. Well, I appreciate it, and that memory seems like it was just yesterday, but uh, some uh, eight or nine years ago. Um, and many tell me that was my baptism by fire. Yeah. Um, and you're right, I uh, didn't 
uh, there was nothing that was going to stop me from representing the interests of the community uh, that sent me to Beacon Hill. And it was something that was very important, very significant, and as you just stated, uh, an enormously successful uh, redevelopment project of an underutilized, outdated commercial uh, industrial park that right now has created thousands of jobs and millions of dollars in revenue. So it not only just benefits the town I represent and the region that we represent, but uh, the entire Commonwealth through an enormous amount of uh, sales tax and mails tax revenue So uh, and job opportunities. So for me, um, it was, um, y you know, I spent the summer in session during informal sessions uh, to make sure that that legislation was always going to be the top priority. And I appreciate the fact that you remind me of that um, yeah. because, uh, y you know, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do the same thing. And knowing that we're here, we're sent by the people that uh, we represent in our districts, and that's whose best interest we stand up, stand up for. And I did that, and I would continue to do that, and I hope to do that until you know the day I'm not in service. And, and this is something that says about your, your personality and your work with your colleagues, because I had mentioned earlier that if I can't get to 21, then I'm not effective anymore for the district, yeah. and that'll be the time yeah. uh, that maybe it's it's time to move on. If you can't get to 81, but you did it, you made the principal stand. I think your colleagues respected you for it, and you did it in the in the right way. And uh, look what you got that that yeah. place. And I think that so much work went into that. Uh, you and the town leaders in Westwood, uh, that you know myself, not too far away from a bordering community and a sometime consumer up there. Sure. That it's uh, it's traffic impacts on the highway and uh, and other major byways have been uh, have been minimal yeah. and as you, you know if you go up 24 in IKEA and some other places in and down in my district down by 295 and by the Emerald Square Mall there are some difficulties so I think you've learned and your, your town your community that you represent has learned how to how to make them be a good neighbor and it, it appears that uh, there's also going to be some public safety as the chair of public safety I'm uh, very happy to see that uh, Chief Scoble has been able to sure. augment both the police force and the, uh, the fire department to uh, to not only serve that massive development but also to serve uh, serve uh, some of your your constituent with a new uh, new fire station in sure. a place that I don't that they seem to think that exists but it's actually just Westwood it's not Islington right <laughs> and you don't necessarily have to uh, have to agree with it, but I would like to not to put you on the spot. But what's your favorite new restaurant up there? At uh, University uh, Station. Yes. Um, well, I guess it's a toss up right now. Actually, there's quite a few, um, and as you can see, I in, I indulge. Um, but Not Your Average Joe's just came online um, already. Again, there's another example of a community partner, corporate entity that has contributed um, from. The day they opened their doors, a $10,000 contribution to the uh, Westwood Education Foundation. So already making a difference in uh, the local community to the students in Westwood Public Schools. Um, and then there's uh, the N Naked Fish, um, which is a pretty good restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so there's some, uh, there's some, a uh, lot of options there. Of course, the landmark flagship store is Wegmans, a supermarket that's been phenomenal. And uh, I know it's almost uh, in itself a, a lifestyle uh, opportunity and lifestyle center for people to be able to shop there and experience it and I know that's uh, they attract from uh, quite a, a, a broad uh, demographic and um, it's it really is a you know specifically both legacy place in Dedham and University Station um, in Westwood um, a perfect textbook example of good government you know a spirit of cooperation with uh, local and state um, and what Westwood offers is the housing component, the retail component, uh, and the transportation component. So everything's right there. And uh, in a, a, again, as I mentioned earlier, a industrial park that was outdated and underutilized and uh, really with no uh, resource of revenue uh, opportunity. So it's uh, so something I'm proud to have been a part of, and uh, I know that it will continue to be successful for uh, decades to come. So, And I know I've given my opinion on it, and I always like to throw the, the curveball into any one of these uh, these interviews. Thank but you. Have the, uh, <laughs> have the neighboring communities uh, <laughs> given you uh, any kind of feedback on what the uh, traffic impacts uh, have been like? Uh, I know it was, a, it was an incredible issue for uh, the town of Canton with Dedham Street, but I think that slip ramp has uh, has has in large part um, 
work things uh, work things out pretty I, well. I, I have to say, from what I know of it, it's been very minimal. I think the uh, a lot of effort and a lot of due diligence went into making sure that um, you know abutting communities were going to be uh, not see a, a, a huge traffic impact. So I think um, everyone is pleased, and I know it, it serves beyond the town of Westwood. Uh, it's a regional destination, uh, retail. Uh, center, and uh, in addition to the employment opportunities for people in those communities, um, there's a, you know, a lot of uh, shopping opportunities as well. So I think the traffic impact is not, of course it's a concern, but that's what we have this the, the process for, and that's why, as you mentioned, living in the greatest uh, uh, nation in the world and to have our democracy in the system that is a model uh, across uh, around the globe. And even for us here in the Massachusetts legislature, we know that we are part of a very special place that um, a lot of legislatures across the country uh, look to us to see where we're going and what direction we're going in. So, And, and, we, and we have to work individually and collectively, and sometimes I, uh, you know, you're, you're very kind not to point out, but sometimes I can talk too much on... Uh, some of the transportation issues that face us and you know those neighboring communities around University Station but when we do take a look at what has happened over the last 25 or 30 years for the suburban communities that we represent uh, Westwood, Walpole, and you move further south Sharon, Foxborough and Mansfield that 95 was in large part constructed many many years ago and through the uh, maybe some of the you know the legacy problems of uh, the Big Dig there was there was a massive amount of resources that had to go there at that time and 95 hasn't changed all that much despite all the population that's moved in and the development we just recently saw the two lane addition uh, heading up one, uh, 95 north to 128 south which has alleviated some of the problems right. but each one of those interchanges I think in a 995 partnership sort of way should be looked at to be um, redone almost entirely and hopefully with minimal impact to residents uh, and others but uh, the uh, the route one interchange that I have down by Common Street by where uh, the old pancake house heading right down uh, to Gillette Stadium and as I discussed the, the train to Gillette Stadium sometimes we have to think more uh, we have we have a job to represent our, our district with state agencies because these state agencies are uh, are hired by the executive, and you know they get to work in a in a big building in um, in Boston, and don't have to be as accountable, and don't have to defend uh, some of the um, the issues that they have. Sure. And I think one of my cross of gold speeches at the breakfast, and I was with you uh, in 2012, that killed the breakfast literally. They ended the breakfast, and that's when I came up with the idea. Uh, for the St. Patrick's Day uh, free breakfast of seniors, which you know they love that I grant them the wish uh, that there's no politics. I will not sing, I will not dance, <laughs> and there will be no politics. And they're relieved at that. So we used to only get 20 or 30 people very in interested in that COA uh, uh, breakfast in the morning. Now I get uh, closer to 150 wow. uh, seniors uh, because we've expanded the food. And I promised I wouldn't wouldn't talk, but I was sitting beside you when I told you I warned you that uh, I had a <laughs> lot of problems with the superfluous nature of that train, its impact on South Walpole, it going down at an at an operating loss. Not that I don't think that there's some good to it, but sure. I think people miss that. That's that's one of our roles I to to fiercely look at these policies and projects and to talk uh, very significantly but I could I could at the risk of going into that I could go uh, all day talking government and personal issues and restaurants and and we do that particularly about movies if I don't have your skill but I uh, don't have as much time and we have I want to thank you very much My for your pleasure. time here today Senator, I, really, I appreciate it I enjoyed the opportunity and keep up the good work and again thanks for uh, uh, inviting me to join you today well, that's all for Beacon Hill Update. I hope you join us next time. Thanks very much. This is Jim Timothy signing off. Thank you. Great job, Paul. Thanks, brother. Wonderful work. Good Wonderful. job.